What's up, y'all? <laughs> it's me, Erica. It's Friday. And for those who do not know, Friday is my favorite day of the week. Favorite, not because it's Friday, but because it's Friday. I really love Friday. I wasn't here yesterday. I recorded actually two videos that I'm going to have to actually cut and um, edit because... They were all over the place. When I tell you that the videos was all over the place, they was all over the place because they were infused for your pleasure. So it was a lot of long pauses. So I got to cut a lot of it. So you'll probably get that over the weekend. Um, you know, what are you gonna do? Um, I was gonna go to Starbucks, but that line is is ignorant. And yeah, it's all the way to the back too. So I made a good choice. Um, so what are we talking about today? <laughs> Do we have anything to talk about? Yo, so all I just, I keep seeing John Gray's name in my, in my Twitter feed. What did he do? Did he take his coat off before the summer? Did he take his coat off in the winter, child? Did he cheat on his wife? What is going on? <laughs> did he take his coat off? His covering? <laughs> I don't know what I didn't read into it because that's not my ministry so I don't know what's going on with him so y'all gonna have to tell me in the damn comments and let us know what the hell why is John Gray and his coat in the news oh look at the skyline it's so pretty the sun's not up yet, but it's like this pinkish, purple. Let me see. Can you see it? I don't think you can see it. Child, I tried to show it to you. Almost ran into the back of this damn truck. Driving so damn slow. What the hell are y'all doing? So John Gray, y'all let me know what happened with John Gray. I don't know what happened with John Gray. What else is going on? Let me think. Oh, I did want to talk about Kevin Hart. He apologized again to our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community, but he really didn't apologize to his brothers and sisters in the LGBT. He went to Ellen. And Ellen, wait a minute. So Ellen called the Academy for Kevin Hart, he went to Ellen to talk about it. He could have gone to any other black queer podcast, video, show, YouTube channel, something. You went to Ellen? Shows you where he believes he is in his career. You go to Ellen? Like, that's weird. Like, I don't, I thought, I, I, it's not weird for him, but I, I definitely wouldn't have gone there, but he's letting you know who his audience is. He's letting you know who his audience is by going to Ellen. He's letting you know who he's his audience. And I don't know when did Ellen become the, the prime minister of the gays. Why does she need to call for you? Like she's putting in a favor for you. What? Ah, child. I don't know. Let me get, let me drive like I got some sense. I thought it was weird, but then I heard some recording about i don't know if this was on ellen because what i did was just i just seen the thing so all i heard was this audio of him saying okay i'm apologizing again some shit some some arrogant another arrogant apology i just really believe that kevin hart has an inability to be humble i believe that that person that's on that show that he had on BET Hollywood Husbands, the character that he played in that show, I've watched, I want to say maybe three or four episodes of Hollywood Husbands. And the episodes I watched, I was like, this is why I don't like Kevin Hart because this guy, this character that he's playing, this is exactly who I believe that he is. That is his personality. I believe that there is truth in that character. This arrogant, bigger than want to be desiring to be bigger than life lacking humility just rude um i just i don't know i just don't i've never i've never cared for kevin hart or his comedy just never just like he's not funny to me 
Oh, this has been for years. This has been since somebody was like, um, go watch Laugh at My Pain. You will really like that. That's so funny and da-da-da-da. You know, he does have funny moments. I'm not going to say he's not comical. You know what I'm saying? He does make me laugh. I, when I watch Cold as Balls, um, I don't know if he still does that, but that's on YouTube. He has like the LOL network, which seems like it's a YouTube station for programming. I don't know. That show makes me laugh. Like he's silly, cause he's silly, you know. Um, but other than that, this apology, talking about, okay, I'm gonna apologize again. that For the last time, like who, in the fuck does that like but somebody who doesn't have any who's arrogant he does he's incapable of taking accountability and you know I, i've said on other videos how he should have apologized he doesn't have to keep apologizing but as your brand grows and new people are introduced to you by way of whatever medium you decide to participate in those people are probably going to hear about the things that you have said in the past. You can't, you've deleted the tweets, but they've already been reported on. So they're going to last forever. And then another tweet came out. Oh no, that was of Charlemagne making jokes about R. Kelly. I'm going to get to that. Um, oh, I'm not really to about Charlemagne, but about the whole R. Kelly situation because. R. Kelly is really just the catalyst for all of this because this is just not R. Kelly. R. Kelly represents a group of men and women who have gotten away for years with abusing little girls and boys. And it's not just all about R. Kelly. It's about us. Let me get back to Kevin Hart. But his apology was like, you know, I'm not going to do this again. I'm tired of doing this. You know, like, his tone was all off again. Like, he just doesn't know how to apologize. And then, Lady Gaga, she apologized for um, collaborating with R. Kelly on a song, something about do what you want with my body or some shit. I remember that, and I was like, why is she doing that? But based on the overlooking of abuse of children and in Hollywood and women in Hollywood people who have done songs with R. Kelly their careers did not suffer nobody Chris Brown has a song with R. Kelly out right now so nobody's career is suffering why because people do really don't care about these children like they say they do they just don't and I like when I when everybody keeps what I'm seeing with this R. Kelly thing online and the contributors people are critiquing and criticizing the contributors people are criticizing people like Charlemagne Charlemagne has his own issues he talked about that the other day on some breakfast club um, um, broadcast where he said you know I've I you know I've been a part of this thing or whatever whatever he said his piece or whatever but it's not just R. Kelly that's the thing it's every everybody is to blame everybody's trying to it, it seems like everybody's trying to figure out who to blame for this we're all to blame all of us especially the men the men have been socialized to abuse women and when I say abuse women and, and children it's because like why is the age of consent, meaning the age that an, a child can consent to have sex with somebody in some states, 15, 16, and 17 years old, right? Why is that okay? Why is that okay in a society where we're supposed to be protecting children and teenagers? Why is the age of consent? Because that's our society, like, why is it okay for ch for children to get married in some countries? Why is it okay for them to marry off little girls as soon as they start their periods so they can start making babies? So they can why? It's a, it, we have been socialized to be okay with the abuse of children and and women. We we've been okay with that. Everybody is to blame. Everybody. Everybody who has made a child hug a creepy uncle or auntie, you're to blame. 
Every time somebody told you don't air the dirty laundry of your family, you're to blame. Every time they said don't don't um don't go in the room with so and so, but he's still there, you're to blame. Every time you told somebody to forgive somebody for violating them, you're to blame. We are all to blame. Every, every time you sat around and saw some, some man disrespecting his wife by bringing his side bitch around your whole family, you're to blame. That's abuse. You're to blame. We act like we care about these kids. You used to be a kid once. Stop blaming. Stop thinking that parents are the only ones to blame. When you were 15 and 16 years old and you told your mom you was going to Lucy's house and you went to the movies and met Bobby and Kenny and Jimmy and had a date going to the movies, in the movies, doing whatever, your mom thought you went to the mall. Now, if something happened to you while you were at the mall, kidnapped or something is your mom to blame you understand what i'm saying like you can't say that these parents need to have gps trackers on their children after a while you're gonna have to let your child be you know get into the world and be independent and with that independence comes less and less supervision and with less and less supervision you have when they are vulnerable Somebody can take them and abuse them. Boys and girls. Like we, we, we're we focused so much on girls, but boys get abused too. And then boys get abused and then it's guys in the barber shop as a rite of passage. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's an older woman. You, you know how many male friends that I have that told me they lost their virginity and the, and the girl was older than them? It doesn't mean the girls are fast. It means that you... These children have been, our children especially, sexualized at a young age. Calling little boys, little man, telling little boys they're the man of the house. You're, you are, are injecting adult ideas into them and then wonder why they mimic adult behaviors and then you want to call them fast. And then you want to, and then you want to hold them accountable for adults abusing them. The same children you want to hold accountable for adults bu abusing them are the same children you tell to stay out of adult conversations. What kind of fucked up shit is that? You, you're too young to have an adult conversation, but you old enough to to be held accountable for an adult abusing you and raping you. You should have known. We're all to blame. I'm sorry. We all are. This R. Kelly situation, the Hollywood music and entertainment industry, all of the shit is dark. They do shit. Russell, I mean, we can name of all the people. Now the guy that was in the R. Surviving, you know, Tori, the, the journalist that, was, that interviewed R. Kelly for Vibe, he's in the news because he was fired from a job for sexual harassment. I guess he kept asking the girl if she wanted to do anal and stuff like that. So my thing is, does that, does him actually getting fired from a job for sexual harassment, I think he was fired, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was something that he kept asking the girl for anal sex. He was, and at your job, that is sexual harassment, okay? Um, but now they're talking about him getting fired, as if it, it really does not negate the fact that he interviewed R. Kelly and R. Kelly said what he said to him. And that was a moment in pop culture history as it pertains to that R. Kelly situation. Are, is anybody surprised? At this point, nobody should be surprised about a sexual harassment, sexual misconduct, rape, any allegation. Nobody should be surprised. Kevin Spacey, nobody should be surprised about that. Kevin Spacey has been abusive and been <clears throat> preying on young men. He been doing that. Y'all letting them get away with it. And then when the people decide that they want to come out with it, you don't believe them. So they're like, what the fuck should I have said anything for? You know? So I don't know. I think we're all to blame. We are all to blame. All of us. I think, I think that we need to talk more about letting children know that they are in fact protected. 
they are in fact protected. This girl is 14 years old. Do you know how many people I heard back in the day when they were passing around a tape with a grown man raping a child? That tape went viral. It was a VHS tape copied over and over. That, that tape went viral. You know what I'm saying? Like, what else would I want to talk about? Oh, I wanted to ask y'all, what would you do? Um, I, I, I needed to get off of that because I can't, I can't because I'll start getting mad and I, I don't want to be upset about anything today. This is a good day. I'm just saying we need to stop blaming each other, stop blaming parents, stop blaming everybody that was around R. Kelly. We're all to blame, all complicit, all overlooking, all saying that it's none of our business. All of us have done it. All of us have said that don't have nothing to do with me. It, that's the problem with our community. It's I'm minding my business. I'm I'm not exposing dirty laundry. I'm protecting the the, the the creepy uncle. I'm allowing the creepy uncle to come around. You know, all of that. We're all to blame. We're all to blame. So that's all I want to say. Stop blaming stop blaming everybody else. All of us are to blame. All of us. But I wanted to ask a question because I was I was um, online a lot of you know of course a lot of shit I get it from online but what would you do if you were in a relationship with somebody or yeah in a relationship that you got married you ended up getting married and you found out that person was either homophobic racist or sexist what would you do if you found out that the man that you married was sexist and a male chauvinist and and wasn't really um an advocate for women like they always have something to say when it's time when it's when there's talks about you know feminism or feminist ideas or lifting women up in a way what what would you do what would you do if you married somebody and you found out that they were homophobic and what would you do if you married somebody and found out that they were racist now here's the thing what would you do if that person was a person of color and you found out that they in some way had some anti-black ideas what would you what would y'all do that's what i want to know i don't know what maybe i just saw some this girl saying how can i get my boyfriend to stop using the word nigger is your boyfriend white? Why is he still your boyfriend? Let him continue to say nigga. Don't nobody. You don't have to get him to stop saying nigga. Leave him. Are you crazy? Oh, I did want to talk about Dame Dash. He was talking about this thing because you know he was with Aaliyah. <clears throat> is actually dating Aaliyah. Were they together when she died? I think so. This thing that he was talking about with Jay-Z working with R. Kelly. Dame Dash said something to me that I was like, you're a fucking hypocrite. Although I do like some of Dame Dash's ideas in terms of business and stuff like that. A lot of people think Dame Dash is broke. I've always said about the Dashes that they came from old money. A lot of people believe that they are new money, but they're not. But whatever, you can do your research. Anyways, he said that he did not want to know what R. Kelly did to Aaliyah. Aaliyah didn't want to talk about it, but he didn't want to know what R. Kelly did to Aaliyah because I would have done what a man is supposed to do and I would probably would have hurt him. So here's this idea what a, what a man is supposed to do. R. Kelly should not even be existing in this world if men were, quote unquote, supposed to do what men are supposed to do. Um, I've seen too many situations where a man said I looked the other way because he really didn't have anything to do with it That's, I don't have nothing to do with that so he looks away you know what I'm saying what is this thing this idea that men are supposed to be doing so I was like shut up Dame you don't even know if you did you would have said you know let's go see a psychologist let's go see a therapist or something and let's talk about this and then handle R. Kelly in whatever way that you deemed necessary but this idea I would have done what a man is supposed to do, you still sitting there claiming you a man. So what is going on? That's the problem that I have. All the men that are standing up talking about we're the protectors of the community. No, you're not. That's the reason why he was able to do all the things that he's able to do because other men and women are helping him. 
if you were really a protector of the community, y'all would have beat his ass the first child that you saw in his presence. First time he said, oh, I have a problem. Y'all would have beat his goddamn ass and, 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 and had him arrested. Y'all ain't protecting nobody. Anyway, let me shut up. The only one that we saw moving around in cars, going up in hotel rooms, was a mother, right? Okay. I need to get, oh, you know what? Let me, I need to go get some coffee first. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get me some coffee first, and then we are going to head on to the other place. But anyways, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. I really didn't have anything to talk about. Um, I had, I'm, I'm still getting this notification on Twitter that I had muted and I want to know why I'm still getting the notification. Let me get over here. No, no, no. I need to get off on the other, other highway. Anyways. Do I have stuff on my mouth? Did y'all? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so that's really about it that I really wanted to talk about. Um, Michael Jackson has a, a document. They have a documentary about Michael Jackson coming out about uh, two people who want to talk about the abuse they endured, the sexual abuse they endured when they were with Michael Jackson. Oh, and this idea that stuff that happened, like, to me, I feel like when people are like, oh, they, they were acquitted or they were found guilty or they pled under oath that none of that shit means anything y'all don't none of that shit mean nothing like oh they they said under oath that he did not abuse them they could have been lying what y'all think like y'all act like under oath really means something i mean it should it's supposed to, but a lot of things that go on in this country is just an idea. None of it is real. None of it is put to work. None of it has been executed properly. It's just a fucking idea. That's why when shit happens in this country, people are like, that's un-American. No, goddammit, that's exactly what America does. The idea of America is what, 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 what everybody has failed to actually try to execute. This idea <clears throat> of what American is and American values and American, American, American. Honey... Oh, he was found not guilty, so I thought it was okay for my daughter to go to an R. Kelly concert. Oh, the little boy, he pled under oath that, that, uh, R and that Michael Jackson never did anything to you. That none of that shit means nothing, y'all. Like, what are you talking about? What are you really talking about? What are you talking about? I thought, I thought well, he, he, was, he was not guilty. It's so funny how when someone is found not guilty the justice system works and when they're not guilty and you want them to be i mean when they're guilty and you want them to be not guilty you know what i'm talking about all of a sudden the justice system is failing us it don't work it let me tell you the fact that there's the fact that people are in jail for non-violent crimes tells you that the justice system doesn't work when people that have mental illness are put in jail without any kind of um, therapy or medication or any kind of clinical interference, that is a fail a justice system that does not work. For a girl who is 16 years old to kill someone that she believes is going to put her at harm that was already sold into sex trafficking, for her to kill the person that was about to abuse her, for her to get 52 years, y'all don't care about kids, and that justice system don't work. She killed, Centoya, Centoya Brown killed a man who was about to have sex with her. She was 16 years old. She was sold into sex trafficking, basically she's a prostitute, Traf trafficking and let me get a coffee and um she killed the man and you, the, she was she's already been in jail why is she in jail because she killed somebody that was about to abuse her that's why i said y'all don't care about kids y'all don't care about kids that girl should not have spent the day in jail she killed somebody who was getting ready to rape her <laughs> 52 years that's not justice. Crazy. What else? 
What else we talking about, child? Who's to blame? Everybody. Dame Dash. I talked about everybody I wanted to talk about. Who else? Nicki Minaj and Cardi B haven't been in the news. What they doing? Who else? What else? What ladies have? It seems like I've talked about only men. Kevin Hart, Dame Dash, Torre. Who's to blame? Michael Jackson. Who else do we need to talk about? John, did I talk about John Gray? We talked about him taking his coat off for the winter. <laughs> that's what you get. That, that's, the, that's the thing like you can't really go hard for anybody because they'll prove you wrong every single time. Let me get my coffee, child. Not do R. Kelly. R. Kelly can't. I mean, it's not funny because, like, for him not to be, for him to have been molested and then he can't read, he's illiterate and all this stuff. We, his people failed him as a child. You know, somebody was in, I think somebody was in the comments talking about, and what about R. Kelly and all this other stuff? Yeah, he is a, he is a product of his environment. He's a product of this idea that, oh, you know, and another thing that I really wanted to talk about was the fact that people keep quoting scriptures and people keep injecting God into this and he's injecting God into, he's doing the same thing that, you know, you know, like it's a manipulation it's to manipulate you it's really weird all right y'all so what was i saying about the church and r kelly yes this is the manipulation being able to manipulate people with religion like how come we fall for it every single goddamn time every single goddamn time we fall for it we always forgiven some predator we always praying for somebody who have hurt us that shit is at why do we do that this idea of waiting for things in the afterlife and suffering now in order to get things you know god is gonna take care of r kelly no <laughs> i know his ass should have been taken care of by human beings human beings y'all got shy rack y'all call chicago Chirac. Y'all got killers and shooters out there. And R. Kelly is walking around abusing little girls and young women. There's something very wrong with that picture. Very wrong with that picture. Something very wrong. But anyways, that's that's my time, y'all. I'm out of here. I'm going to go edit this little video here and upload it for you niggas on Friday. Hope everybody has a wonderful weekend protect your energy oh i did want to talk about something else but maybe i'll talk about it on the way home um how to deal with people who are always miserable i want to talk about that because i think we need some tools on how to deal with somebody who's always miserable antagonistic and miserable grumpy old men grumpy old ladies curmudgeons is what i like to call all right, y'all, I'm out of here. How many times I got to say it? Let me see. All right, I'm out of here. Peace. Take care of each other.